update on that. We'll just let them be scared. So, asymptotes. Vertical asymptotes we've already been finding because we know vertical asymptotes occur where x can't be 0 in the bottom. So all you have to do to find your vertical asymptotes are find the zeros of the denominator. And I wrote d of x there, but you could just put, like, set denominator equal to 0. If you set the denominator equal to 0 and it never equals 0, then there are no vertical asymptotes. Happen very often, it does happen. Horizontal asymptotes are really defined as what's happening as x is getting bigger and bigger and bigger and x is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Um, sometimes there is no vertical asymptote because as x gets bigger, y just gets bigger. Or as x gets bigger, y just gets smaller. So we're going to start with c down here. If the numerator degree is bigger than the denominator, so that's n and m are coming from these exponents up here. The highest exponent in the numerator, the highest exponent in the denominator are the degrees. If, like my example here, if the degree in the numerator is bigger than the degree of the denominator, then this is not approaching any specific number. It's just growing bigger. As x gets bigger, y is just getting bigger. So we say if the numerator degree is bigger than the denominator degree, there is no horizontal asymptote. And maybe you remember from algebra 2 that there's this thing called a slant asymptote. Do you remember a slant asymptote? We'll talk about it later. Not today, though. <laughs> Do you remember anything from Mr. Gress's class? Did he even teach you? <laughs> I feel like sometimes when the teacher leaves, you guys can just be like, I didn't learn anything, because he's not here, to be like, I taught you this! He can't defend himself. <laughs> Did you love him because he really didn't teach you math? And you just got easy... But you have no memory of slant asymptotes. <laughs> All right. If the numerator degree is less than the denominator, like good old 1 over x, right? If there's no x in the top and there's x in the bottom, and definitely the numerator degree is less than the denominator, then you're going to always have a horizontal asymptote on the x-axis, which is the equation y equals 0. Right, remember this? We talked about this graph. Because it has an asymptote at the x-axis. But if the numerator is equal to the denominator, it could have any number as its asymptote. It's all depending on the leading coefficient. So again, this big other thing up here is because if the numerator degree is equal to the denominator, you take the leading coefficient, uh, which would be a sub n over b sub n. So an example of that would be like if I said y equals 7x squared plus 1 over 3x squared minus 7. The numerator and the denominator have the same degree, x squared. So the horizontal asymptote is just the leading coefficients. So the horizontal asymptote on this one would be at y equals 7 thirds, which would not really be that fun to graph, but we could do it. Any vague memories of this come to your head? Um, being able to graph rational functions, like you've got to be able to find those asymptotes first. So I have a couple examples of just finding asymptotes, and then I have one more page of notes. Find all asymptotes, and when you're going to graph, that's step one. Find your asymptotes, because if you can find your asymptotes, then you just have to pick points in the asymptotes. So I usually start with the vertical asymptotes, that's just me, because to find my vertical asymptotes, I'm just going to set that bottom equal to zero. And remember, an asymptote is a line that your graph never touches, which means your answer should be an equation, not just a number. Really nice on this, because when you solve it, you get an equation, right? Take the square root of both sides, and I would get x equals plus or minus 3. Which means there are actually two vertical asymptotes at negative 3 and at positive 3. So far, so good. <laughs> 
thousand posts. There's no work to really do. It's you have to memorize those rules about the degree of the numerator and the degree of the denominator. So on this one, the, the numerator just has an exponent of 1. The denominator has an exponent of 2. So we could say the numerator degree is less than a denominator degree. So what does that mean for my horizontal asymptote? It's y equals 0. So don't just say 0. y equals 0. You do not have to label it as vertical or horizontal because x equals implies it's a vertical line and y equals implies it's a horizontal line. So as long as you write it as an equation, you don't have to say, hey, these are my vertical ones, these are my horizontal ones. Questions about that? All right, do the bottom one. What do you think about the horizontal asymptote? Because the degrees are equal, right? So this I set this up to be tricky on purpose. The leading coefficient, is the leading coefficient just always the first number in front? It's the one with the highest degree, right? So the tricky part of this is lots of people want to say the answer is 1 over 1. But it's what is in front of the highest uh, degree. So since these are the highest degree, the leading coefficient is really negative 5 over 2. Which if you want to say negative 2 and a half, that's it. This is the preferred method of fractions. <laughs> In math, we love improper fractions. So in, in whatever grade they teach you the word improper fraction, I feel like it's the cleaning that it makes you think improper. Oh, I should do this. Okay. So today, because we were supposed to do this on Friday, and we didn't. We didn't already know how to find vertical and horizontal asymptotes, but we just learned it. Today we're going to actually graph the rational function. And I am completely aware about desmos.com slash calculator that I showed you. And I'm aware that there's graphing calculators. But I want you to be aware that I need you to be able to graph these things. We have tests. I'm not looking at graphing calculators. Graphing calculators are nice. There are certain types of like graphing calculators. You're welcome to check your answers on the graphing calculator. And just know on your tests. Well, Their test, you've got to be able to graph these. Um, so feel free to use that to help check your answers, but don't use it as a crutch. And as a test that might be Here you go. Mr. Okay. Rose said that I am powered by tears. And that's all I have to do. Because your tears should be powered. Good idea. All right, so here are my steps of how I think you should graph a rational function. Find your asymptotes, because your asymptotes cut this into pieces. So step one, find your vertical asymptotes. Step two, find your horizontal asymptotes. Step three, pick some points in the intervals. And usually, if there's only one vertical asymptote, like we get the little shapes like this. I like to do that, but... If there's two vertical asymptotes, which you're going to do like that, I'm going to talk to you about what happens in the middle. Usually one or two things that can happen. A parabola shape or there's another shape that could be. <laughs> Alright, so. Oh, that's so unfortunate.
All right, so what is my vertical asymptote? Right, like if we subtracted three and then you have to divide by negative, or just think if I plug three in there, I get zero at the bottom. What about my horizontal asymptote? Is the degree of the numerator and the denominator the same? If the top has no x and the bottom has an x, it's always going to be zero. Right, you got to study those rules. But we have a test. Not this week, though, so that's okay. Maybe next week. So, x equals 3. I'm going to make a lovely dotted line, and I'm going to cheat. Not cheat. Use my resources, right? Right. Sometimes you can't. You, your brain is the only resource you get. What? I try to cheat. Three people three. Dotted line. Because it's dotted because your graph, it's not really part of your graph, it's just to help guide you, right? And at y equals zero, which is just the x-axis. So I'm not, not at So here's where I know rational functions seem scary to graph, but they're not at all. Because if you can just figure out where it starts, you know it's going to follow the asymptote. So if there's only one vertical asymptote, you might only have to pick one or two points to see where is it going to be. Is it going to be over here? Or is it going to be over here? Is it going to be down here? Or is it going to be over here? So I do allow you to use a scientific calculator, so don't feel like you have to do the math in your head. This one's not that bad at math. But some of them, they're a little uglier. Um, but you will not be allowed to use a graphing calculator on your test. So, since my asymptote is at 3, my advice to you is always pick points right on either side of your asymptote. So if it's at 3, what would be a great point to pick? 2 sounds like a great point. You can pick 1 or 0. I just always pick right next to my asymptote. So if I plug 2 in there, I would get another 1. So at 2, I would get 1. I could pick more points here, but do you agree that that point is already pretty close to my asymptote? So I know the shape. I know it's, whoop, right? It's going to be a little curve. So I don't pick any more points. I, if it was, like, way out here, I would have picked more points. But it's not. So I'm going to just follow this up like this. And I'm going to curve it and follow it back like this. And look how fancy that looks. Most of the time, not always, most of the time if it's up here, it's going to be down here. But there are exceptions. I have seen them where they're here and here. So I'm going to just check real quick and make sure that when I plug 4 in there, that I do get the negative 1. And I do. So this is an example where it's just going to be the opposite over here. And again, I can just use my asymptote to help me draw that. Not so bad. Well, you show some little kid that, and they'd be super impressed that you could grab that. Yes. All right, let's do hard. This is my last example, and then you can look right over. So, um, Justin has already said the horizontal asymptote is y equals 0. Do you agree or disagree? Because there's no x in the top, and if there's an x in the bottom, it's always going to be y equals 0. The numerator is less than the top. What about my vertical asymptote? And if there's two of them, because I would get x squared equals 4, so when I take the square root, I get plus or minus 2. So this is where they get a little bit uglier because they're going to have this middle section. Sean. That's so bad. Little there. Whoa, that's Whoa. weird, right? <laughs> 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 
They got a little off center. Yeah. And then at two and negative two, so. Again, you don't have to make these, and if you look on a graphing calculator, and probably Desmos as well, they don't they don't put the dotted lines on there, right? The dotted lines are just kind of guides. So if you don't want to make the dotted lines, you don't have to, but it's kind of just nice, like, I think you have to follow. The outside two sections should still be our, whoop. The inside, you got to do a little bit of work on it. And Justin said it's a parabola. Sometimes it's a parabola, sometimes it's one, I say, a cubic shape, like the little S shape, right? Like we did uh, Friday, like the... So you need... Hmm. We'll talk about that in a second. So, sometimes the middle part, or even right here, can cross the horizontal asymptote. That seems weird, right? Like you think it can't cross an asymptote. So a vertical asymptote is undefined in the problem. A horizontal asymptote is really defined as what happens as x is approaching plus or minus infinity. So a horizontal asymptote is as x is getting bigger, y is approaching zero. And as x is getting smaller, y is approaching zero. When it's really close to zero, not close to infinity, it sometimes crosses the horizontal asymptote. Not always, but it does. So just be aware that your graph can cross the horizontal asymptote. But it feels like your mind is just blowing up right now, right? It's everything you've ever known. But it's because it's a limit as x is getting bigger. So when x is really small, I can cross there. So it can be like a cubic shape and go through this. Just so you know. I'm sorry. So I'm going to start out here. At negative 2 is my asymptote, so I'm going to take negative 3. Not super great number, right? When I plug that in there, I get not n minus 4, 5, so I get 3 fifths. Gross. Uh, which is just somewhere underneath 1, right? Because I do know this is what's happening as x is getting bigger. I do know that this should follow this like this. And this side is going to go up and follow that vertical axis. Again, be careful because lots of times what's here is going to flip right down here. But there are exceptions to this, especially when there's an x squared in the bottom. Like what happens now, this was at 2, when I pick positive 3, I also get positive 3 fifths. So I still get the two little shapes, but instead of being down here, it can be up here. And again, kind of the, the hit there is there's an x squared in the bottom. I think that's going to be an even graph, maybe an even graph. Um, so this would also be like this. <laughs> I probably shouldn't have that little hump there, but that's okay. Then in the middle, I want to see what's happening here. So I'm going to pick zero. The middle parts where I have to pick some more points sometimes. And if I pick zero, I get negative three fourths. Yes. Is that enough to tell me how this graph's going to go? Nope, nope. I probably should pick one. And if I pick one, what do I get? I get negative three on the bottom, so three over negative three is negative one. And what's going to happen when I pick negative one? I get the same thing, and again, talk... Going back to what we talked about on Friday, even in odd functions, an even function, if we plug the negative number in here, we get the same thing as a positive number. So this is why it's symmetric over the, the y-axis. Like, it should be the same on both sides. So I do get this parabola shape <laughs> that should follow those asymptotes. Sometimes it will go through there, and it will be a cubic shape. So check those. And again, I know that you have resources available to you that you can check these. But I want to see some work of where you're getting your numbers from, so I know maybe that you're not just uh, using your resources. Okay, so your homework is online. I do have the, I think I have the one, I have the two homework printed out. 
There are five questions. So online, 1.2 day one, I hope you have that done already. 1.2 day two, there were five questions. The first couple are about even odd functions. If you haven't done those, you need to do those. And then the last two or three are about asymptotes. And then I have this worksheet for you that has three questions. Otherwise, just get served on stuff. 